right, guys. Welcome back to Earn Your Leisure Podcast, Episode 8. We have a very special episode today. But before we start, we have to talk about a few items. So first and foremost, thank you for your support. Thank you for rocking with us. We appreciate you. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Earn Your Leisure. Uh, All of our videos will be on YouTube. We've been asked for YouTube, so we're on YouTube now. And also turn on your notifications for YouTube as well. Our merch is up. That is on our website. The shirts that me and Troy have on right now yeah, yeah. is part of the collection. So make sure you check that yeah, out. Shout out to everybody supporting already. Yeah, financial literacy is something that you know you gotta get the word out any way you can. Yeah. So it's important, you know, fashion is a major part of how we communicate. So we have to be mindful of what we wear, what we support. So all of the the items on the shop are in relationship to financial literacy. Pretty much, so yeah. Yeah, check it out. It's dope. Pretty yeah. dope stuff. And our Patreon is up once again. Uh, it's patreon.com backslash earn your leisure. Again, we're going to have some bonus content on there, and we have other ways to get in contact with us and reach us to have a more personal, uh, in depth conversation with us. All right, so check us out on Patreon. Yeah, too. Patreon. Patreon is dope because it's, it's more interactive, and it's a lot. You'll see. It's a lot of dope stuff. All on the website, uh, earnyourleisure.com. And then we also need your support more than ever. I am currently serving a shadow ban on Instagram. Oh. If you're not familiar with that, Google it. Uh, very disappointing. Highly, Terrible, man. highly suspicious that I'm on shadow ban. But in any event, <laughs> as long as the good people for like the second time, for the second time in two months. So as long as the good people like you guys keep spreading the word, we will continue to grow. We will continue to give you the message. But we need your support. We need your help. So all right. So if you have been listening to the podcast, you know that our podcast is different than mostly any other podcast. We're a regular podcast. You, you have a show and you bring a guest on and you interview them and. That's kind of like the podcast, right? It's like an interview show. It's cool. But our podcast is different. It's educational. We tell stories. We look at backstories. So we don't really have to have guests. But we wanted to open the platform up and start to bring guests in. That made sense. But when we when we decided to bring guests in, we wanted to keep the same format of the podcast where we're going to be telling stories, looking at the backstories, and educating you guys. But we wanted to bring experts in the field that we were talking about. So if we're talking about real estate, you want to bring an expert in real estate. If we're talking about stocks, expert in stocks. So today we are going to be talking about some tax issues and some tax discussions. So we have an expert in the tax field, Miss Business. If you follow her on Instagram, her Instagram handle is Miss Business. Miss Business, right? On yes, Miss Business. So welcome. MS dot business one zero one. Yes. Yeah, welcome. Miss Business one one. Wait, 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 wait. So Miss Business is a she's a she's a CPA and she has a tax office in New York City. She handles personal taxes, business taxes. Uh so yeah, she knows all about taxes and she is our first guest ever. So that's a big deal. Yeah. And also we're in Women's Month. Um, so we thought that it would be appropriate to have a first guest as a woman. As we said, we're not, see what you know, we you, you, like, you, you like that, you like that, you like that, right? <laughs> so it was real subtle. So yeah, you know, we talk about business a lot. A lot of times business, you know, you hear about men a lot and it's, it's male driven, but there are a lot of women entrepreneurs, women investors, women doing their thing in business. So we wanted to highlight that and we brought a woman on to help us out. So thank you. For joining us we appreciate it thank you for having me i'm so excited to be here um yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to this getting into this conversation right. <laughs> i'm usually watching you on instagram like still trying to like write down my nuggets so i'm happy to be here uh, thank Thanks you for we coming. appreciate Thanks it for so all right so the number one topic for the last couple of weeks and everybody's been hitting me up to talk about this on on the gram is how amazon pulled the biggest magic trick in history, right? So if anybody's not familiar, <laughs> Amazon has not paid taxes in two years. Well, federal taxes. Federal you taxes. Be clear. Yes. They have not paid federal taxes in two years, right? So you look at that and you say, how? They made $11 billion. $11 billion last they, year? Yeah, they doubled their profits last yeah. year. So they went $11, 11 billion. billion. They made $11 billion. Not only did they not pay taxes, they got 150 some odd dollars back. They, yeah, $136 million tax refund. Refund. Yeah. So they, they actually was negative 1%. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the amount of taxes that they paid. Amazing. For the second year in a row. It's even deeper than that. For the last 10 years, they have a combined tax rate of 3%. 3%, yes. For the last 10 years, federal tax rate. So everybody's asking me, 
How? How? How is this possible? How is this possible, right? Yeah. All right, so we researched and found out there are three ways that this is possible. All right, the first one is st- uh, stock-based employee compensation. But before we even go into that, before we go into that, it's a comp- it's very complicated, but it really is three ways, right? Yeah. There's credits, rebates, and, and loopholes, right? So nobody really knows exactly what Amazon did because they didn't make their taxes right. public, this right? Right, suggest. So this is all just kind of speculation based off of it. Yeah. But within the credits rebates, loopholes that big corporations get, there's three items. Three right? items so, that they're thinking, this is what happened here. All right. All right. So the first one was stock-based employee compensation. Rather than uh, employee, employees getting a salary, they get stock options. All right. And they think that $1.1 billion um, of the deductions came from that. The second one was deferred income tax. But before we go, boom, boom. Deferred, so stock options. We can't just, breathe. people might not know what that is, right? Right, we're going to go into detail. So we're going to go into detail about all of them. Okay. All right, so that's the first one. Deferred income tax. So these large companies, um, like, you'll find out that they can put off their taxes from a year to the next year. I think going forward, you said 20 years maybe? Almost, right? They have so, a loss. Right? And then the third one was tax credits. So um, I believe Amazon uh, can expense over almost 100%. Of their capital investments, so that means things that they, uh, new infrastructure, new buildings, new warehouses, uh, new ways to deliver, they can write all that off. It's called capex, capital capex, expenditures. Yes. Yeah, we'll come back to that. And all right, okay. So now, let's start. There's also one more, but we'll talk about that later on. Yeah. But stock options, right? For people who aren't familiar with stock options, are Miss Business? Do you want to kind of? Um, I can elaborate on that. So. When uh, you get hired at a company, a company can, instead of giving you a salary or giving you some sort of compensation, they'll compensate you in the form of stocks, right? So they'll give you um, sort of equity share in their company. So when Amazon will give their their, um, employees stock-based compensation, what happens is they are able to write that the 100% market value of that of the of that stock off on their taxes. So let's just say hypothetically, you know, they have 100% of I mean 100 million dollars in in stock-based compensation that they offer to their to their employees. That whole 100 million dollars is now going to be able to be written off. So that's how they're able to deduct that additional pay that they're allocating out to their employees through that stock-based compensation and they're more willing to do that because it is a tax write-off. Okay. So yeah, so that actually so yeah, the stock-based well, that's a clever move. stock-based compensation <laughs> clever move. or stock options it's called a different name, but it's the same thing. Uh, so they actually saved 1 billion for that. And that was half of their tax liability with with just that. Yeah. So just in, in paying employees, executives, um, company stock, they were able to save $1 billion in, on their tax bill. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now, we, so now you have that. Then you have also CapEx. Right? Capital expenditures. Yeah. Want to talk about that? I'll talk about it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so with capital expenditures now with um, the new Job Act after Trump, Now, before you would have to depreciate your capital expenditures over a specific amount of time, depending on what you were um, investing in. However, now in 2018, if you um, invested in any type of capital expenditures for your business, you are able to write 100 percent off in the year in which you incur that expense. Right. So now when Amazon is, uh, you know, releasing new infrastructure or they are, you know, deciding to open up a new warehouse, that's now a 100 percent write off. They no longer have to recognize that years down the line. They can do it 100 percent in 2018. Right. So, so that, that's important because yeah. that's, that's something that, that, that just changed. Right. Yes. Yeah. That just changed. So now you can write off 100 percent of your capital expenditures yes and i'm pretty sure there's gray areas that you can <laughs> We're trying to find some loopholes yeah. in the irs <laughs> yes right? yes yes so then all right so capital expenditures 100 percent. so now we have two yeah what was the other one you said we said divert deferred income tax um so and with their setup right yeah, they can defer so, their payments right yeah so there's there's deferred um tax payments so 
What happens with corporations if you have the option to defer your tax payments? So what that means from a 2017 perspective uh, to 2018 is in 2017, they held off on some income that they decided to pay taxes on and they paid for it in 2018. And what that means from a percentage perspective is last year, corporate tax rate was at 35%. And now in 2018, it's at 21%. So that's a huge drop. That's a huge drop. Yeah. Yeah, right? so, like so now Amazon was probably looking at child yeah, sites. Amazon, oh you my! Know, their CPAs over there was like, "Listen, we're gonna hold back on, you know, Let's on, just wait yeah, on, this. on paying taxes on this money, and we'll claim it next year, and then pay taxes on it next year." So, how many years can go in between uh, you doing that? Can you? I think is it two years you can go back, or twenty years? How does that work? So when it comes to things like research and development, any type of losses, you can go back two years or carry it forward 20 years. So that's just saying, which is, I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it is what it is. It's the law. Yeah. Um, but we can do that, right? We can't say, hey, I have a loss this year. Go go back to my, my prior year taxes and add it on, add that loss to my prior year taxes two huh. years ago and then give me some money back. Right. And so that's what's happening with these corporations. And that's how they're able to... Um, either not pay tax in the current years or even go back to pre um, prior years and say, hey, I need some more of that money back that I gave you guys. So it's speculated that uh, Donald Trump hasn't paid tax in 20 years, right? Absolutely. So this is what we're referring to when in this situation? Um, well, I think with Donald Trump, uh, there there's a lot of different things when it comes to Donald Trump, Donald Trump like not paying taxes. Um, Donald Trump lobby. So when you are a big company, you have great economic value, you do receive a lot of tax breaks. And so throughout Donald Trump's career, he has fought extensively and been given a lot of breaks even back in the 80s when New York wasn't as developed as it is now um, it was more of, as an incentive for him to you know build up certain communities just how it is now with like the opportunity the Opportunities Act, right? Like if you take your capital gains and you put it inside of this fund, mm -hmm. you won't have to, you you can defer your taxes. The same thing that he's been doing, right? And I think also he's doing the same thing that the rest of these corporations are doing. He's deferring his taxes. He probably has so many, you know, so many expenses, so many loopholes that he's taking advantage of. Yeah, no, it's important to keep in mind that, like you said, Amazon's not the only one, right? So yeah. out of Fortune 500, the top four, Fortune 500 companies, 100 companies paid zero tax yeah. or negative tax. Not an isolated issue. 100. It's not isolated. Yeah. <laughs> and out of 100, 58 had multiple years of zero or negative taxes that they paid. So Amazon's just doing what everybody else is doing. So one of the, one of the things that um, people were saying on, on our page was, should we be mad at Amazon for doing this? Or should we take the initiative to find out how we can also benefit from these type of loopholes? You, you can't. <laughs> yeah. the, the reality is and I, I try to talk to you know Go it's ahead, funny tell. that you said it so bluntly like yeah, that tell them because why. you know me personally I'm never mad at anyone for taking advantage of things that are available to them mm -hmm. right because the laws are out there. Amazon did not create the laws. Amazon is just playing by the same laws that all of these corporations have been playing by for forever, right? And I try to communicate that to my clients all the time where I'm like, wealthy people are doing the work, right, that they need to. They're educating themselves. Yep. They are, you know getting out there, whether it's forming a fund or it's knowing your tax code or just being aware of what you can do and then using that to your advantage, mm -hmm. that's what you need to do. But to Rashad's point <laughs> about <laughs> just not being able to do it, that's the reality. And these companies like the Amazons, the Netflix, these companies have great economic value. So therefore, they're able to take advantage of a lot of these tax these tax loopholes, um, and and you better believe that Amazon has all type of tax attorneys oh, yeah. that's in court right now, right? So a lot of people they don't want to pay taxes, but y'all really want these problems. <laughs> <laughs> can't afford these problems. You can't afford these, can't problems, afford these you problems. You know, like just pay your taxes. Um, but you know, but on a serious note, there are some things that you know business owners can do. They're looking to pay negative taxes. Nine times out of ten, not gonna happen, mm -hmm. right? Um, or they're looking to pay no taxes at all. That's not gonna happen. Your company doesn't have that same economic benefit. Like Amazon is like the 
biggest company in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're not Amazon. You can't yeah. take Amazon. Yeah. You only want to play with Amazon a little bit, right? Yeah. Because they have so much value. Yeah. There's, there's levels. So yeah. all right. So the bad news, guys, is that you can't do what Amazon is doing. You can't. <laughs> But you can do something, right? Yes. So now we're going to go into what you actually can do, guys. So as we said, we're not going to leave you hanging, right? So our point here is to educate you guys and to put you in positions to win. We want to see you win. So as I said, you're not Amazon. You don't have stock. Most You don't have stock options to give employees. And you know that took off half of their tax liabilities right there. But there are advantages of being a business owner. And that's something that we want to encourage uh, entrepreneurship for a lot of different reasons, not just to save money in your taxes, but it's one of the perks that comes with being a business owner. Because even if you look at it from a, a corporate st- standpoint, like large corporations, the corporate tax rate is 21%, right? 21%? Yep, 21. Um, that's, but the highest federal tax rate for individuals is 37%. So if you're a wealthy business like Amazon or if you're a wealthy person, right, and you're like a basketball player, or an NBA player, NFL player, whatever, and you're at the highest federal tax rate, you're at an advantage to be a corporation because the most you can pay is 21%. Now you're working your way down from there, whereas the federal tax rate, the highest you can pay is 37%, and you have to work your way down from there. So we're going to take that on a micro level. And, you know, talk about small businesses because, you know, that's the majority of businesses in America and in the world of small businesses, right? Amazon, we talk about Amazon and Netflix, but that's not typical. Those aren't the majority of businesses in America. Uh, so, as a small business owner, I'm going to speak from firsthand experience. Whereas I can say that you have benefits of being a business owner because you can deduct a lot of things, right? So, yes. even when we talk about Amazon as far as their travel and, and things of that nature. It's the same thing with a small business owner on a certain level where you travel, you see a client, you can deduct that. You take your client out for a meal, you can deduct that. Um, you lease a car, you can deduct that, the miles, as long as it's for business. So your cell phone, you can deduct that. You buy furniture for your office, you can deduct that. So you have a lot of things that you can deduct where if you just have a regular job, you can't deduct any of that stuff, right? Keep so, your receipts. So yep. it's, it's hard for you to do anything with your taxes if you just have a regular job because there's only so much that you can actually deduct, right? Where a business owner, you can, you can get creative. Be responsible. <laughs> Be responsible. <laughs> Be, responsible. <laughs> Be responsible with that. So, okay. I'm backing up. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So when we talk about the advantages for people mm-hmm. that may not be familiar or people that want to be business owners or want to be entrepreneurs, what are some basic advantages that entrepreneurs and business owners have as far as the tax system as opposed to regular individuals? Well, first, I always tell people, because I do get that question a lot, what's the advantage of me being a business owner um, or even claiming self-employed, right? Because then you are um, a business owner as well versus me being um, an employee. And I always tell them employees are taxed first and they have to pay their bills later where a business owner pays their bills and then they're ta- they um, are charged tax on what's left, right? And so like you said, we can't, as a business owner, there's a ton of things that you can write off, right? Like you can write off your travel, you can write off your meals, you can write off anything that relates to your business, your supplies, your employees, right? So everything that relates to your business, you are able to write off. Um, You know, I know we spoke about it and covered it a little bit when we were talking about Amazon, but even CapEx, right? If you have any type of machinery or, you know, warehouse, or even for my real estate investors, or, you know, just landlords, even if you have one and you don't have like multiple properties. So if you're doing things to your property, like capital improvements, you're able to write that off 100%, right? Versus being a homeowner where you're not able to write that off at all, right? So those things are very important when you are a business owner. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And that's something that people have to fully understand. I like what you said as far as taxes. I don't know, I forgot exactly how you framed it, but. Pay, pay. Regular people, regular people, people with people with, Us. People, no, no, no. people with people with regular jobs pay taxes first. Mm-hmm. Business owners pay taxes last, right? Yes. So you can make a hundred thousand dollars, but then by the time you have all your deductions, you might only pay taxes on twenty thousand. Yep. Now it's important to be responsible with that because the the good thing about 
having a regular job when it comes to taxes is that you don't have to worry about paying the taxes. It's done for you, right? right. It's taken out of your paycheck. Mm-hmm. So most of the time, you, you might even get money back at the end of the year because they've, they've taken too much money out, right? Whereas a business owner, they're not taking mo- any money out of your paycheck. It's going to pay later. So yeah. you <clears throat> either pay quarterly or you pay at the end of the year. So what happens a lot of times is that you don't save to pay your taxes, right? So you let's say you make $100,000, right? But you're living like you make 100000 So like everybody, you're spending 100000 You're living up to the limit. So now when it's tax time, you have a tax liability for 25000 30000 but you don't have twenty five thousand saved, right? So now you're behind on your taxes, right? And before you know it, the next tax year comes around, and this is how a lot of business owners fall into tax trouble because so many. it's up to you to actually pay it. Right. It sounds easy, but it's not. It's discipline. Not easy at all. Yeah. It's a lot of yeah. discipline. I try to find a lot of systems. For my clients, one being quarterly taxes, getting me in there, doing your bookkeeping quarterly, whether it's me or you, you know, you just kind of knowing what your income and expenses are for that quarter. But that's important because at the end of the year, paying twenty five hundred quarterly versus paying ten thousand at the end of the year seems like a you know a world of difference. You know, so I do that is important, and I'm glad that you brought that up because. It sounds good, like, oh, I get to pay my taxes later, but imagine looking at your W-2 and you're like, oh, I paid out 12000 this year. Imagine that 12000 at once, at, once yeah. at the end yeah. of the year. You, you're not going to want to pay it. Oh, you don't, you don't have it. Yeah, that's <laughs> Where true. Where am I going to get it? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, you don't have it. You don't have it to pay. Okay. Now, so now, Before we go any further, because you said a, a few things, um, real estate and you said regular people. And I guess I well, was... That's where, that's where yeah, I was going to go with this. Yeah. Everybody, so everybody's not a business owner, right? right? So most people aren't business owners, right? So we talked about the advantages of business. But there's also things that regular people with regular jobs yeah. can take advantage of as well, right? So, okay, I'm a business owner. Troy, you're a school teacher. I'm an educator. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I spoke, I spoke from the business the standpoint. Yeah. So... I want you to talk on the other on the other side, the flip side of the coin. Right. So I'm, I'm an educator, and taxes are taken out. Um, and like I said, we have a set salary, and that works in our benefit, especially when we want to go to do things like purchase a home. Right. When we look at our income, our income is steady because it's the same thing. Whereas you, for example, you might have made a hundred thousand, but if your deductions were seventy five thousand, when the bank looks at it, they said that your income is only twenty five thousand. You might not be able to be approved for a loan. Um, but one of the things that um struck me this year and this actually happened i was i was shopping at um best buy um and uh one of the employees there ran up on me he knows me i've been there a few times and he goes yeah i can help you i can help you can i ask you a personal question and he says um did you get your income tax back and i'm like what (laughs) and he's like yo i didn't get my refund back they messed with my money and they're telling me i'm getting less this year so um has there something has changed in the federal income tax for us regular people? I'm not going to call you guys just regular people. <laughs> I'm going to call you guys employees. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, a lot has changed. And I think that that's important, right? The tax code has shifted to be in favor of the real estate investor and the business owner, right? All of the perks. And I'm sure, I don't know if the guy who you were talking to, like if he had a house or what his specific situation was, but to just speak a little bit about some changes that I've seen a lot with my clients, Mm -hmm. one being people who have homes have been hit hard, Right. right? So I'm not talking about the landlords or the real estate investors. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about homeowners, single family homeowners. And they've been hit the hardest because now taxes are capped at 10 10,000, 10, yeah. right? So where last year you were able to, you know, take in all of your sales tax, your sales, I mean, your income tax mm-hmm. and your property tax. Now it's not even putting a dent inside of no. your, you know, inside of your itemized deductions because it's being capped at 10,000. Yeah, I, I was right? affected and by that so, this year. Yeah. yeah, and so what they also did was they raised standard deduction and got rid of personal exemption. So to just elaborate a little bit about that, in prior year, in 2017, we would all receive standard deductions based off of your filing status if mm-hmm. you were single, head of household, right? And then you would also, in addition, get a personal exemption. Now, personal exemptions have been taken away 
standard deductions has been increased, right? So what that means is, let's just say, let me give some numbers. If you are married filing joint, right? Your standard deduction has now been increased to $24,000, right? However, in order for you to itemize, you have to get above that standard deduction. So now if you have a home mm -hmm. um, and let's say you have your property taxes, right? And then you and your wife will have your, um, your income taxes, your state income taxes. That's not probably going to exceed over $24,000 once you start adding everything up. So now it's just a situation where everyone, not everyone, but for it's a lot harder for people to get over that standard deduction hurdle now. And so that's why people are getting hit hard, especially homeowners, yeah, we, because I, we had a few. last year you guys were eating. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was so, so, is there, so, is there any, so is there any tips that people... Um, that aren't business owners that uh, employees can do to reduce their tax liability, to save money on taxes, to, yeah, anything they can do? If you are a homeowner and you've been hit, what I would suggest is putting your property inside of an LLC. Because that way, if your property is in an LLC, it's now considered a business. Mm. So now that it's considered a business, now you're able to write off 100% of your CapEx and well, your capital improvements. Right. So like if I and need a new AC. If you AC, need a new AC, right. you know, as, as a homeowner, you right. can't write that off. But as a business owner, you uh, will okay. be able to, right? So now, um, and then there's also a 20% deduction. Right. So let's just say if, you know, your home, I don't know, let's just say in your LLC, you're bringing in ten thousand dollars on your personal return. You're now um, given a 20 percent deduction. So now that would be a two thousand um, dollar deduction addition that you would be receiving on your on your taxes. So that would be my suggestion for. Um, for you know, people em that yeah, that, like employees. If, if, if they own a home. If they own a home. Um, Anything somebody can do if they don't own a home. Kind of difficult, huh? It's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. It's just the way the tax law is set up. It you is. know, it's set up for business owners and, and, and companies, really. Uh, yeah, and, and the thing about it is that it's a. I don't even want to say it's unfortunate because it's just, it is what it is, right? It is right? what it is. And one thing that I, I stress now more than ever is that we have to pay attention to the people that, in, that are in office and play up to that, right? I find that if in school they taught us to focus more so on the taxes, then our mindset would be so different, right? Because let's just use when Obama was in office. I believe when he was in office, there was a... Um, a rebate for homeowners, like $8,000 or something like that, right? So many people took that money and then reinvested it and purchased homes, mm -hmm. right? And so now with Trump, if you're going to purchase a home, now may be the time to, you know, get that rental property that you want. Now may be the time to start that business that you want because now you're able to get more, um, you know, you're able to write off more and get more deductions. So we just have to pay attention to the tax code a little bit more. Yeah, education is the key. Yeah. And also, um, it's a couple other things, uh, that people should be aware of too is uh, 529 plan. That's a uh, it used to be a college savings plan only, but now with the new tax law, you can use the money for anything, as far as education is concerned. So you can use it for prep school, you can use it for private school, you can use it for elementary school. So that helps parents out as far as paying for the cost of education, where you just don't have to use it for college now. You can use it for anything related to education at any point in time during a child's life. That's important. And then also the limit has been raised as far as how much money you can put into an IRA and 401k as well. Um, so the, the limit for IRA this year is $6,000. 401k is 19000 mm -hmm. So those are vehicles that you can put money in for your retirement. And that, that helps you save money on your taxes as well. That's probably yes, one of the biggest tax deductions that people have if they just are employees yeah, because that allows you to save up to almost $20,000 in a 401k, 19000 if uh, and if you're over 55, you can actually save even more than that. Mm -hmm. But that's a pretty sizable amount, and it goes back to you know it's in your account and it grows for your retirement. So does it also reduce your income for that year? That's how yeah, yeah. that's yeah. exactly what it does. Yeah. So that's why you save money in your taxes because mm -hmm. it, it reduces your income. Yeah. So something to be aware of. But the key is to educate yourself and um, to learn the political game. And, you know, these are, these are the rules that we're in. So as far as Amazon, to say, like, whether my personal opinion, if it's fair, if it's not, I mean, what are they supposed to do? 
not do it, right? So mm-hmm. it's the same thing with you as an individual. You should, you know, learn the, the tax code, the tax law, and take advantage of it. And the thing about being a business owner, too, is that you don't have to be full-time. <clears throat> right? You can have a business and still That's work fine. a job as well, right? right? And yep. then you can still take advantage of your business, right? Because you have, just like any other business that has, you have expenses and you have things of that nature as well. So you don't want to start a business just for tax benefits. Obviously, you want to start a business because you want to be successful in business. But... That's another benefit and something to strive for where it's like you don't have to do one or the other. You can do both. And by having a business as your side hustle or a part-time job or whatever, now you're opening up the window where you can deduct more things and, you know, it gives you a lot more flexibility. So, yes, okay. that that any any final words about that for any personal or, or business? No. I f- yeah, I feel like I said... All this on my mind. <laughs> All, right. All right, cool. Okay. Okay, so for the final segment, we're going to switch topics 180, and we're going to talk about Kanye West. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kanye um, West. Not in the sense of some of his, you know, political statements that he's made in the past, um, more so of what is going on with him as far as a legality standpoint with his publishing. And we spoke about publishing, I believe, on our first episode, right? Yeah. yeah we spoke yeah. about right, everything that a person makes, um, as far as music. Uh, what Can I just interject real quick? No, go ahead. Man. So, all right. I think this is important for people to understand. Publishing and masters are two different things. Two, yeah, right? separate. Masters is ownership of your music. Like, you make the decisions. I want to put this music in this mu- movie. I want to put commercial. this commercial. Yeah. If you don't own your masters, the decision is being made for you by right. whoever owns your masters, right? Publishing is when your music is played. Every time your music is played, you get paid for it, mm-hmm. right? So the publishing is split 50-50 between the composers of the music, the producer, mm-hmm. and the songwriter. Right, and some, and for cases like Kanye, he's both. So he's a songwriter for most of his music. And is he, is and, he? And he's the producer for a lot of his music, too. Is he too. the so- songwriter? If a, well... Of, in recent years, there are other people on the on the There's song, but a lot, he a lot of people. <laughs> there are a lot of people on it, but he's still one of them, right? So he still get a percentage where he's. There's some artists who don't write any of their music. Right. He does write some of his music, and he's the producer for a lot of the music with other people, but he still gets a percentage. Okay. So like, he's fighting for that. He wants his publishing back. So he doesn't own his. He doesn't own his publishing. So EMI. He's never, he's never owned his publishing. EMI is the company who owns his publishing, and their their parent company is Sony ATV, which we we heard in. You know, the past week um, about ownership with them, um, but he doesn't own it, and he has sued them. He sued them uh, because he wants it back, and his thing is he's it's dating back to 2010. Um, but he originally signed a contract with EMI in 2003. So before he makes college dropout, before he is the well-renowned superstar that he is, he signs a publishing deal with them. Now he has had production credit up until that point, so he did the blueprint. And he had some production on, I think, Siegel's album, Beginning Siegel's album, and a few other Rockefeller artists. Uh, he had production credit, but he wasn't um, a re- recording artist just yet. So before college dropout, he signs a publishing deal with them. Now, the issue is that uh, Kanye lives in California. You want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So, all right. So Kanye is suing. All right. So he tried to get his publishing back, right? right. He's unsuccessful. He's not able to get the publishing back. So, well, I didn't even say back because he never had it. He's, he's trying, trying to, to get he's it. trying to get his publishing. That's what he wants. He's unsuccessful, so he sues. He sues under the grounds that in California, you cannot be in a contract longer than seven years. They have what's called a servitude law. It's interesting. That word is interesting. We'll get back to that later. So, EMI countersues him. For this breach, week. This week yeah. for breach of contract because they said that the contract is in New York. New York doesn't have a servitude law. That's the so plot twist right there. Seven years doesn't matter, right? So why is this interesting? Because he had a very famous quote where he talked about slavery, right? <sighs> Kanye's quote was, slavery sounds like a choice a to choice. me. A choice. Yeah, so he says that comment about slavery, right? And it got all kinds of backlash and it went viral and all that. So the interesting thing now is that in his contract, it came out recently that he has a clause in his contract with EMI that he's not allowed to retire yeah, so, or take extended breaks from music. Yeah, so the, the written in the contract, right, it says his principal occupation needs to be writing, recording, producing, 
for a major label. Furthermore, he may not initiate a retirement or an extended hiatus. So he can't even take a break. Literally in his contract. Now, he has had revisions to the contract since 2003. Um, and I think the most recent one was 2014. And we don't really know that the details of the revisions. But that piece is still in there. So this is so crazy because so they have a servitude law, which is servitude is like slavery. That's That word is synonymous with slavery. Kind of different, but it's similar. And they have in his contract that he can't retire or take an extended break. No breaks. Forever. Right. In perpetuity. Yeah, that, so it says terms, but there's no distinction on how long a term is. Now, his thing is saying like, hey. His thing is seven years. Seven it years expire. because I live in California. And their thing is like, hey, you signed this in New York. I'm biased when it comes to Kanye because Kanye... <sighs> He's too important. Like he's an important person. Like, we can't throw our brother away. No, we can't throw him away. We can't throw him away. And you don't want to throw Kanye away. No, we can't. We can't throw nah. our brother away. We can't. We I'm can't. not gonna lie. All these little church things that he's been doing lately, I'm like, okay, kind of like Kanye. Nah, Kanye. <laughs> Kanye played a major Sunday, part. Sunday service. The graduation. Yeah, the graduation album. Right. That was like soundtrack music to like my life. Like you know what I mean? Like so, I. I so oh, the, the crazy that. thing about graduation, and I told um, everybody on the initial. Um, episode was like, yo, I was into the music. I remember getting that album early, and at the time, you were in Hawaii. I printed that thing up with a bunch of other CDs, and I came to your house and brought it to your mom, like, here, ship him this album. And you called me like four <laughs> days later, like, yo, this is the best album I've ever yeah. heard. So this for people it. that's not familiar, I, I went to school in Hawaii, right, for two years. I went to school in Maryland for two years, and I went to school in Hawaii Tell for Tell where you got music from. Yeah, Troy. So that's, <laughs> that's before... That's before well, that was like right around the time the iPod was really popping off, but we still had CDs. Yeah. So I had a radio with a CD player, so he would send me like new music, because I'm, I'm in Hawaii, obviously, so it's totally different, right? I'm not getting new music. So he's sending me new music via CDs. So the Kanye CD, I like burnt that. I think I had Kanye actually on my iPod, though, but uh, I remember I was listening to that like all the time. So yeah, obviously, it's an unfortunate situation what has happened, a lot of things, but we're not going to talk about that too much. But the business side yeah. is, is, is disturbing and, and it's interesting that it comes out right now because this is the same week or month as the De La Soul situation, right? Yeah, but before we go, because we have to touch on De La Soul, but the, there's key literature in the contract, that principal um, source of, principal occupation. It's a toss up because how do you define that, right? Is it him being a producer, songwriter? Or is it the businessman who makes the easies, right? Because it's, it's tough to tell. Like, one generates more revenue, but the contract says that this has to be it. So, like, last year we saw him put out five albums, right? Now, well, he, might, produced, he, he produced, produced five albums. Well, he was on, featured on every one of them. Yeah, they, they produced five albums. He, yeah, yeah, so in terms of producing, like, yeah, that looks like his principal occupation because he put out five albums and he was featured on a bunch of them. And, and, two, and that year was over, so in 2019... Right, that's when the lawsuit happened in January. How do you sign a contract that says you can't take a break or you can't retire? Well, who read this like, contract? What was in his mind at that moment? I gotta you get know, on. it's I know that's what I was thinking. Like he probably was just like, I'm never gonna want to retire from this. This is what I'm gonna want to do. Well, you forever, know what? A lot of people but... like because we're gonna talk about De La Soul, right? Yeah, but a lot of people would say, well, these artists signed the deal, so yeah. we don't have sympathy for somebody that signs a contract. But then it's like. You got to put yourself in these in these people's shoes, shoes, right? Like, if this is your dream, your entire life. Like I remember I saw Charlemagne one day. Well, I didn't see him personally, but I was watching The Breakfast Club. And he was talking about his deal that he signed with The Breakfast Club. And he was saying that it was right after he was fired. He was unemployed. And The Breakfast Club called him. It was like his dream job. Number one market. He's from South Carolina. So, long story short, when they offered him the deal, he signed it. He's, he, didn't look, yeah. he didn't look at it. But on, on top of him, like... Kanye, on top of him getting the revisions in his deals, he was getting advances every time he resigned. No, no, no. So what, what, what I'm trying to say is that yeah. if this is your opportunity and you've been trying for this your whole life and yeah. Jay Z is there and nine times out of ten, you're going to 2003, gonna, you're doing it. You're going to sign it. Yeah. You're going to sign it. Yeah. You're going to sign it. It takes a strong person to do what Master P did and turn a million dollars down and say, no, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying that the right thing to do is to sign it. Right. But I'm just saying I could understand where a kid that's not properly educated on business, mm -hmm. that's young, that is impressionable. He's gonna do whatever gonna he has do to it. do, yeah. and then think about the repercussions later on. Yeah, I'm I'm on now. Yeah. The crazy part is, and part of that contract too is like he has this clause where he has to the same person that 
became Kanye West, he has to maintain that. Like, it's almost like a keep that same energy clause. Like, he has to Seriously? perform. Yeah, that's part of it, too. Like, the same person that generated all this income and all this popularity, you have to be that person throughout the term of this contract. What does that mean? So, like, if he's uh, going to the Grammys and saying something crazy or he's stepping on stage and he's saying something that might be outlandish to some, you have to re- maintain that person. So, like, when Jay was do, like, do, Yo, you know, do, you, do you know the language on that? in that? No, it's well. I could pull it up, but no, okay. It's it's it's, it's in the contract, and it's like that. It's the J line. Like in order to be Bobby, then you gotta be Bobby now. Like that's it. Like he has to be Kanye he West, the person Kanye. that we knew throughout the terms of the contract. That's interesting because he's never been the same person. Exactly. He's always a different person. So there's always another breach. Different. So then, then you see there's another breach, right? So it's like, wait, that's not the guy we signed. I don't know how he wins this. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully well, he gets the, his thing, per- the, thing his that, the thing that he might have in his favor is the servitude. That's why he's going after the servitude thing. And it's like, this isn't in good... And the fact that he can't retire. So every contract legally has to be done in good faith, right? Yeah. Even if somebody signs it, if it's not done in good faith on, between both parties, then it could be null and void. So something, in my opinion, I'm not a lawyer, but if a contract has in it that you can't retire, that's not in good faith. That's because not. nobody... That doesn't even make sense. It say, okay, you're tied to a certain amount of albums, right? Or this is your your requirement. Yeah. But to say you can never retire, everybody that has to retire at some point. Like, what are you supposed to work till you die? Uh, right. I mean, that's crazy. So, all right, Kanye, we're, we're gonna, gonna follow this. We're story. gonna pray on the situation. But can we talk about De La Soul? Let's go into that. All right. So De La Soul, if if anybody isn't fully familiar, because you might not know who De La Soul is, if depending on when you were born, right? Yeah. yeah. If you're younger than what, 30? 30. Let's give him 30. Even 32. Maybe, I don't know. Because a lot of people may not be familiar with who De La Soul is, right? So right. De La Soul is a legendary rap group, mm-hmm. pioneer rap yeah. group. Um, like in late 80s, early 90s? 89, they come out with their first album. 89. Yeah, Three Feet High and Rising. Okay. 89. So 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Yeah. 30 years ago. So, all right. They're, they were signed to a label called Tommy Boy. Which isn't around anymore, but at the time they had a lot of. They, they're back. Uh, they got like some some stuff that they're releasing, but okay. they, they they were sold in 2002, and they lost their catalog, um, and then they got it back. They got their old catalog back, dated from 2002, pro, from everything previous and up to 2002. So they lost soul as part of that catalog. Okay. They have nev- their music has never been on any streaming service ever. Right. Right. Because they don't own their music. They don't own the masters. They don't own the publishing. They don't own anything. So. Now, their music is now going to be released on streaming services. But it came out that their label owns 90% of their publishing, right? They're a three-man group, so that leaves them 10% to split. So that leaves them 3.3% to Each. split. So it's a whole uproar of, like, how is this possible? How does somebody own 90% of the music that you created? Right. And why should we... And, and the thing is, like, listen, this contract needs to be revisited and it needs to be restructured. And the label's like, why? You signed why? that contract 30 years ago, <laughs> right? <laughs> a lot of things have changed. Like, one of the things um, that the company is saying is like, listen, we in your original contract, we own 70% of the publishing. You had 30. But over time, right, because you have accumulated debt, and a lot of people don't know that, they've accumulated debt because a lot of the songs that they did from, I believe, 89 to 96, um, some of the samples weren't cleared on their songs. So they got lawsuits, and the, the record company has to pay those lawsuits. So they're saying, listen, you've accumulated debt for us, so we're going to add that into it. So it originally starts at 70%, but it grows to 90 It's like crazy. Like, how, how are you even supposed to get, make money off of that? You're not supposed to make money off of it. Exactly. That's the whole point. Right. That's the whole point. So now it's a whole big thing, and they're trying to rework the deal, and um, it's like a boycott on Tommy Boy. Jay Z has not put the music on title, yeah, um, in support of them. And I think they actually signed a Nas um, Mass Appeal now. Mass Appeal. So they have um, um, so the Sony uh, Tommy Boy decided after the uproar that they're going to suspend. They're, they're going to put a suspension on releasing it to the streaming services until they can work something out. So they have done that in good faith. Um, but like you said, Jay was pioneered that. He said, look, we're not putting this on title. Not till y'all figure something out. And they have, I believe, so seven years of music. Their biggest song, I believe, was uh, Be Myself and I. Um, and then they had Stakes is High. They had, they had a, a good catalog with Tommy Boy. But Tommy Boy has a, a lot of artists. 
and they might be going through a similar situation. So like Naughty by Nature, which was a huge group in the nineties, like they could be next. Right, so we'll see. And even the War Report, like that's one of our favorite albums. Well, that's what, remember Nori he said left Tommy Boy because the label just they just suck, suck. Yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, Tommy Boy is and Genius too said that he was like, "Yo, they they ain't my boy," and that that's like the hashtag that's been being used, like Tommy ain't my mother effing boy. Um, but that comes from that era too. Yes, yeah, a lot of skeletons in the, in, the, in the music business. So yeah. once again, you know, it's a, it's it's something that. A lot of people aspire to be in the music business, yeah. but it's important to understand it's a business. It's a business. And, and, and before we even go, like, there are some people who have done an amazing job with the business aspect of it, right? So, like, yes, we spoke about Prince, and now he, he changed his name to get the rights to his music, right? He was the, form, the artist formerly known as Prince because he couldn't use it because of the, his deal. But Frank Ocean, I don't think people understand what Frank Ocean's done. So Frank Ocean um, was an artist on Def Jam. He put out uh, Channel Orange. One of my favorite albums. You? It was alright. You ain't like it? I didn't listen. I know you ain't listen to it. But Channel, <laughs> so Channel Orange was a great. It was a critically acclaimed. I think he won a, a Grammy Award for it. Um, and between that time and like 2016, he uh, was having some issues with the label, and he only had a two uh, album deal. So he did something really ingenious. He put out an album. It was endless. It was actually a visual album. If you watch the album, it looks like an Ikea commercial. That's, music is just being played and he's like in this warehouse and he puts the album out and that fulfills his contract. The very next day, he puts out an exclusive album on iTunes called Blonde. So he did a deal with Apple to exclusively put that album out and got that done independently. So like he put albums back to back and got the money. Like Endless was like, Nobody remembers that. He dropped the bogus album to get the out of his deal. It was a visual album. Like, I'm serious. It looks like an Ikea commercial. It's just black and white and it's visuals and he's in his warehouse and there's music being played and you're like, yo, what am I watching? And then the next day it's like, boom, oh, here's the album. So like the fans were like, oh, great. We got new music two days in a row. Record company's like, wait, yo, he just pulled a fast one on us. He's looking at it like, bet, I just made money from That's Apple funny. and I'm going to make some money from these little the streams that people thought Endless was my album. So like, there's ways that you can be creative with it, um, but I don't think people know about it. So that was that was a pretty. I saw. It. I think ASAP Rocky has spoken. Hey, he about did it. say that recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but all right. Well, shout out to him. Um, okay, guys. So before we before we wrap up, thank you for coming, Miss Business. So oh, please, no please give you. give the people <laughs> your you information, how to how to contact you, how to reach you, how to follow you, all your social media and all that. So right now, I'm only on. Instagram, Miss MS dot business one zero one. Um, I have an office in Brooklyn, so if anyone is ever in Brooklyn, I also have a location in Manhattan. So just contact me. You guys can hit me up in my DM. My email is ask at Miss Business one zero one dot com. All right. Well, yes. Once again, thank you guys for rocking with us. We will be back next week. And um, yeah, continue to give us your feedback uh, and your thoughts and your suggestions. And then also remember, the website is up with all of our information. Follow us on YouTube uh, as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on social media. And um, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. We're going to keep going as long as y'all keep supporting. I know that. All right.